Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 170 of your favourite Formula 1 show. Yes, Knowing Wheel returns this weekend, ready to look towards the Chinese Grand Prix. Of course, I am joined by Formula 1's biggest fan of a Chinese driver. <laughs> it's it's Jamie183. I'll take that. Uh, to be fair, I can't think of any obvious Joe Guan Yu fans apart from myself. So I'm, quite, I'm very excited. Obviously, my hopes are on the floor because... Uh, the, the stake Formula 1 team kicks Alba is absolutely horrendous this year. But uh, we can hope and we can dream and we can soak in all of the attention that Joe is getting for this weekend, regardless if he gets any points or not. Well, yeah, I think, uh, just going back to your biggest fan thing, remember only one of us does have a picture with him. So, you know, talk about fans well, like that. you know, I've got a friend who went to school with him, so... Do you? Yeah. I've true. never heard this story. <laughs> No, that's as far as it goes. It's not very interesting. But his fair English enough. name is Stephen, so my I friend who knows him... I didn't know that, him, to be fair. ...knows him as Stephen, rather than Because Joe. one of my mates used to go... I think used to go go-karting with someone that go-karted with him, and right. he was always just that, like, he's known as Stephen for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's his English is, name. There we but go. We're, there we're, you go, fun fact. We're unmasking Zhou Guan Yu. <laughs> we're going to do a Zhou Guan Yu iceberg at this point, very soon. <laughs> Just all dedicated to him. Um, but we have got quite a few interesting things to talk about this week, of course. Most notably, the return of the Chinese Grand Prix. The first time in five years. Yes, the last time Shanghai was on the calendar, Max Verstappen had just five Formula One wins. Lewis Hamilton had five Formula One World Championships. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo had just moved to Renault. Uh, I had about... 12,000 subscribers on my main <laughs> channel, uh, and Knowing Wheel was not even a consideration. Uh, it may have been. Maybe. We'd been, we'd been talking about this for years. Maybe it, was, eh, maybe it wasn't. Fair, we fair. were still doing league racing. That's how sad our lives were. So. We were still league racing at this point. <laughs> That's how fun. We, we've, really, we've really matured since then, haven't it's we, It's pre-COVID. That's mad. It is crazy to think about. It. You know, five yeah. years is a long old time, isn't it? Yeah, there um, you go. But we're it's back. Absolutely wild. We are. We're, we're still kicking around for for better or for yep. worse. <laughs> um, Indeed. Yeah. I mean, we've got the first sprint weekend of the year, haven't we? Um, they, they've changed the format again. I think it's a subtle move in the right direction. Um, but let's be fair. We're, we're still very much on the. Eh, great. Don't really care yeah. that much, do we? Yeah. I mean, this weekend is a bit unique because the sprint races are such unreasonable times for European audiences uh, so I think the viewing numbers will be much lower than they were for Interlagos for instance I think that was the last sprint race wasn't it yes um, because I think the sprint race kicks off at about 4am UK or something yep uh, so I would not be surprised if it's like record low numbers for viewing but in context that's understandable but I don't like this I don't. I mean, sprint races are alright for the fans at the track, but they're just so pointless for everyone watching at home, and it just kind of spoils the main race. So we've spoken about that a lot before. But I read a good article on the race actually this week um, that basically now they've they've swapped uh, normal quality back to its traditional slot on a Saturday afternoon. So now you have sprint quality on a Friday evening and sprint race as like a warm up for real qualifying. It just makes it even less important because you could tune in for normal quality on Saturday afternoon having missed all of the sprint action and you wouldn't really know or care any different. <laughs> it's it's a little bit mad because the headline from Friday, there now won't be a headline, whereas before you had who got pole. The headline from Saturday was always who won the sprint race, which will now be who got pole. <laughs> and obviously Sunday is Sunday. So... Yeah, it's it's an odd one, but I, I don't would know. be say very very interested because I mean, like I said, it's a four a.m. start in Shanghai, which I believe it was four a.m. for the Australian Grand Prix. Now, obviously, I know it's a Sunday versus yes, a Saturday. Was. Yeah. I would be really intrigued to know, say on Sky Sports or something like that, how much lower the viewership is for the sprint race than it is for the Australian Grand Prix a couple of weeks ago. Um, but that being said, though, I mean, we were talking about this pre-show, weren't we? It still feels like, obviously, Formula 1 are kind of still banging the drum about sprint races. 
it feels like they're not trying to do it as much this year, but desperately still they need that. They just still haven't had a blockbuster sprint race, have we? We've we've had what like the closest we got was Brazil 21. Now? Yeah, exactly. We 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 are still waiting for kind of that blockbuster sprint race that F1 can just use as propaganda for it forever. Yeah. Whether it's changeable conditions. I mean, to be fair, Saturday in Shanghai looks like it might be wet. So that might do it's a It's meant favor. to rain overnight, which could make things interesting. I mean, this is this was going to be another point we were going to go into in a minute. Um, but if ever there was an opportunity for a crazy sprint weekend, this is really looking like the one it could be, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, because they're going into sprint quality off the back of one hour practice on a track they've not been to in five years. Hasn't really been used in five years. And, and they've resurfaced it. I was going to say, yeah, the, yeah, it's resurfaced, and since then it has basically just been raining for days on end. I mean, Bottas went round um, yesterday at the time of recording, um, and was saying even on his bike it was quite <laughs> difficult. So it, he's probably it does... faster on his bike than he is in the F1 car, actually. At the minute. Well, I'm sure he gets quicker pit stops on that thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it, yeah it, if I want to believe that there's an opportunity for some craziness to happen this weekend. But I'm still trying... Because it's even things like... Because Belgium last year could have been a good sprint race. Um, but of course, then obviously the safety car just basically ruined everything, didn't it? Mm. Um, and then the track didn't dry out very much. So it's kind of like... It, we, I mean, we were talking about this pre-show, weren't we? It, it feels still with sprint racing like they've tried to implement it in an era of cars that aren't designed to sprint race we were saying if you've done this 20 years ago back in the refueling era the potential for some absolute bangers back in the day yeah yeah definitely and then when the cars were just more on edge now they're kind of like i don't know they're more like cruise ships than they are speed like speed boats nowadays back in the day they kind of like uh, yes they're faster now but that's because they're so much bigger and more powerful and the tires have more contact surface, like, but they're just more safe than they used to be. Like, 2008 wasn't it when they got rid of traction control and still had groove tires, which just made the racing crazy because oh, no one could keep their car hilarious. on the track. Hilarious. Which yes, looked quite unserious when you know drivers are just flying off the circuit at any given opportunity, but it was it made a great spectacle. So I just think the cars are a bit too like steady now. I, I mean, it, it's obviously with, you know, the advancements and things like that, of course, you know, it's suspension and things like that. But, of course, Formula 1 cars now are just incredibly grippy at the mm. end of the day. And it, it just feels like, of course, there is, you, you know, there's even an element, of course, I know we've spoke about this before. Um, but, sadly, at the end of the day, Formula 1 drivers now are simply too good. You know, it's the, <laughs> it's the idea that even the worst drivers won't crash at Monaco unless your name's Stroll or Latifi. Um, and that kind yeah. of thing. A similar happens in football, to be honest. Everyone gets annoyed that, like, tactically, every manager at the top of football now is is way better than they used to be. So you don't get the manager just telling one player to dribble through the whole team. And it just makes yeah. it a bit more, like, watered down. And well, there's you know too much to data, expect. isn't there, in everything nowadays. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting, because maybe we're just being nostalgic, and it wasn't ever good in the first place, but... Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> As we said before, if we were gonna do knowing we we're live with some old race watch-alongs in the future, which I think would be incredible, yeah. two thousand and eight would absolutely be one of the first <laughs> places I'm looking for videos. I've already got like a mental list in my head of races <laughs> I'd want us to go back and watch. I would just want to watch Brazil 2012 to torture myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yeah, I mean, still, it still hurts to this day. It's just, yeah, it feels like with sprint racing at the moment, is they've, they've tried to make something artificially unpredictable in a sport that is ultimately, and this isn't a new problem either, but ultimately has been famously predictable for a lot of its history. Yeah, you kind of get one in, one in five, one in ten years that is quite unpredictable. Well, like, again, I, I know I mention it probably about once every other week, but 2006 to 2010, man, was yeah. such a golden era. That five-year window was something that Formula One could never have dreamed of. And I yeah. think now is he's finally starting to become the nostalgia that people I think associate with the V10s. Genuinely, from 2011 onwards, there's probably two years where you would have predicted the wrong champion. 
if you get what I mean. I'm going to say your thing here. I mean, 2014, potentially, there was a bit of unknown uncertainty mm. in it. But then but after I one race, you could have picked six, yeah, 16 I guess you're and 21. 26 and 21, yeah. It's... Like, other than that, the favourite going into it has always won the championship. And that's, exactly. that's what, for like 11 out of 13 years. So yeah. it is a predictable sport. And that's kind of just how it is because the cars are not equal. And generally, there's one car that's a bit of distance ahead of the rest. But that so, is Formula One at the end yeah, of the day. We have, what, we have a sport we've signed gone down up a rabbit for. hole. <laughs> As in, we have immediately gone down a rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got a few other big bits of news, haven't we, as we head into Shanghai. Um, Fernando Alonso, kind of surprisingly to both of us, wasn't yeah. it? Confirmed he's staying at Aston Martin for another, I believe, two year deal. Yes, a two year extension. So it takes him up to the end of 26, I believe, yep. which is absolutely insane that he debuted in 2001. <laughs> but uh, yeah it kind of for me ruined silly season a bit because he was one of the key players and he's obviously staying put so I think for him he's obviously he's a big enough name that he can kind of he can hold the cards in terms of negotiation and if if he wanted to go to Mercedes I'm sure he would have gone to Mercedes but he would rather stay where he is I guess so fair play and to be honest Aston are as quick, if not slightly better than Mercedes this season so far. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, uh, I don't know. I, do, I think, obviously, yeah, for Alonso, it's a good move. But it seems to me very much not a Fernando Alonso style move. It's a bit He's safe, always- isn't it? He's always been the risk taker. He's always, uh, you know, I, I've, I've never hidden it well that I'm not a fan of Fernando Alonso <laughs> by any means. But he, uh, you know, there was always one thing I could pride him for was he was, you know, never afraid to take a gamble and go somewhere else. I mean, it's never worked for him, um, with the exception of Renault back in the day. But even that, that was because he was a Renault Junior, <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, and it kind of feels like now is you're getting towards the end of the career. You know, unless he believes Aston Martin are going to be cooking something wild for 2026. Um, but obviously he did also make it clear, why would I go to Mercedes when they're in no better position than we are at the moment? When I can yeah. just kick Lance Stroll's face in week in, week out. Yeah. Boost his stock. No doubt of getting beaten. So, yeah, the team absolutely loves him. Clearly it's got a lot of backing. The factories, like the facilities they're making at Silverstone, will probably like be top three facilities on the grid, do you think? It's difficult, yeah. It's difficult to differentiate, isn't it, nowadays? Because everyone yeah. seems to be doing so much. Yeah, but I feel like Lawrence Stroll, you know, Alonso is kind of secondary benefiting from Stroll's delusion of trying to make his son world champion. Oh, so absolutely. If he makes a car good enough to be champion, Alonso wants to stay there and just win it himself. <laughs> well, Alonso will win it himself. Yeah. If there's any, yeah. I'm not even convinced if they made a car worthy of being a world champion that Stroll would win it anyway. Yeah. It would have to be quite a you know, half second clear everyone else, wouldn't it? So, at least. At yeah. least. I was much <laughs> off Alonso was he in Japan one point two seconds or something wild. Yeah, but you know, Alonso's a very good driver. I'm not arguing against that, <laughs> but are you are you suggesting in a world where there's a threat for a championship that Hamilton, Verstappen, <clears throat> Leclerc, Norris you'd basically yeah. be requiring Williams to be the and even Albon then would get the better of him. Is there <laughs> any team on the grid? that doesn't have a single driver that is at least half a second clear of Stroll. I'm trying to think. Uh, probably, I wouldn't say Sonoda's half a second clear of Stroll. I probably would now. It would be t- He's half well, a I'd... second clear of Ricardo, and I'd say they're on a pretty similar level. Stroll at the needed, yes, uh... Ricardo fans, I'm saying he's as bad as Stroll <laughs> right now. Stroll got sixth place in Melbourne, put some respect on his name. Yeah, yeah, but that's because no one else above him finished. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Half second is a big distance in Formula One, and Stroll got a pole position once. You know, well, he's, he's going to get another pole position this weekend because apparently <laughs> the conditions are only comparable to Istanbul years ago. True, true. And if Stroll had won that race, I think I would have stopped watching the sport. So it's a good job that Lewis Hamilton came through. The <laughs> best bit about Stroll taking that pole was how upset Max Verstappen was. Oh yeah. That was quality, but so you know what? Max so had the last funny. laugh. He span in the race, didn't he? And almost got beaten by Albon. Uh, yeah, it was a poor showing for Red Bull, but you know, three <laughs> world championships later, who cares? <laughs> 
four, basically, mate. We know how this year's going. Three, yeah, three and a half. <laughs> um, let's talk then, Jamie. F1 2025 calendar has been confirmed. Yes. Thoughts, yes, it has. feelings. It's basically the same as this year, isn't it? Apart from one thing. Uh, well, there's a few changes. So you've got Melbourne is the host, which is very nice. That was always which we already this knew. Year. Yeah. Because is it two out of the next, or is it like four out of the next fifteen or something? Isn't it that Melbourne has to? I be thought the first it was race. half and half. To be fair, it might be five in fifteen, but I thought it might have been five in the next ten. I don't know. Regardless, there's some some years that Melbourne will be first, some years that Bahrain will be. Um, but we knew that this was going to happen because Ramadan next year, uh, yeah, clashes with the first week. How inconsiderate! And uh, Albert Park had already leaked it months ago. Yeah. Yeah, so Bahrain <laughs> and Jeddah can't. I don't think they want to do Saturday races again, basically. So they're go. They're going a bit further back in the year. So April eleventh to the thirteenth for Bahrain, and April eighteenth to the twentieth for Saudi. Which that's a triple header. That's dumb. That's really yeah. dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Japan, Bahrain, Saudi. What a stupid triple header. Yeah. Okay. And back to back, Melbourne to China is going to be a bit tight for the teams. They are. I mean, do you want to, this is what I was going to say. Do you want to know what's incredible? So you got back to back between Australia and Shanghai, back to back to back between Japan, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. Then Jamie, the gap the between one. Silverstone and Belgium. <laughs> I saw is that. Three weeks. <laughs> You've got two weekends off between the UK and Belgium. Like, what is the point of that? Well, we basically got a summer break before the summer break. Yeah, so between July 6th, which is a Silverstone race day, and August 31st, which is Zandvoort race day, so two we've months. got two races. <laughs> two races in an eight-week window, basically. And they're both within, we're... they're back-to-back. <laughs> yeah, it's mad. It's absolutely <laughs> mad. Yeah. I, I do mean... like that they were, uh, they're making it slightly, you know, they're making the calendar make sense a little bit. Baku's later, which is new. Or is that not new? That's this year as ah, well. okay. Well, there you I, go. I think I the, the problem, of course, is now they've got is where Belgium got shuffled in pre-summer break, which can I just say I hate with a passion. Yeah, Belgium, Belgium should, should be always the be back. the returning race back after the summer. Of course, it then completely gets messed around because obviously you got the Spa 24, which is normally towards the end of July. So mm. I think that's why they couldn't do Belgium a week earlier and have like one on, one off, one yeah. on, one off. But it's just, I mean, in terms of actual. Calendar wise, I don't mind it too much. I feel no, I like the layout it. is quite. I feel like Brazil is too early in the year, but then again, Brazil should always be the finale. Yet yeah, never is. Again, um, it's a ridiculous triple header um, to finish the season off. Again, yes, <laughs> there we go. Carnage. They're going from Vegas carnage. to La Salle in a week, in like five days. That's fantastic. And if La Salle's anything like it was last year, that's going to be even more problematic. Yeah. It just is. It's bizarre, isn't it? I think it's the only way we can kind of describe it. <laughs> it. It feels like it's well thought out in terms of, you know, the tracks where you're going. Like, it feels yeah. a lot more, you know, they kind of did all this stuff a couple of years ago. How they wanted to try and make it more grouped up and things like that. Still, of course, because of the Middle East, um, and, you know, a little bit of cash money under the table. <laughs> um, they obviously are split out two and two. <laughs> Um, obviously we return to Miami and then go back to Europe and then go back to Canada and all this, that and the other but we, we, we can understand that, we can accept You can't that. really race in Canada unless it's June or July really, can you? Pretty much, yeah um, But I feel like, yeah, the actual track order I'm I'm quite happy with Yeah. The, the way got... it's laid out is a bit more bizarre Yeah, and uh, you heard it here first, I'll be in Monaco on the 25th of May 2025. Will I be in Monaco? In. In you will be as well if you want to be. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Live knowing Will from, from a Monaco restaurant. <laughs> oh, exactly. That'd be fantastic. It'd be, it would just be 20 minutes of me complaining about how we spent 60 euros on a pizza. Or something like <laughs> yeah, that. but that's basically your ticket because you just book a table at a restaurant. No, and you can no, watch it's the race. all covered, mate. It's all protected. Nah. Yeah, just do that. Just, it's no, not no, what no, you know, no, it's no, who no. you know. Fair enough. Do you know anyone there? Not yet. My parents That's will in a, in, in, in a month. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. We'll be there. Monaco live return to Knowing Wheel. We look forward to it, ladies and gents. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking back through the calendar, though. Of course, like we said, double header to start the year, triple header. Then Miami is actually by itself, which is quite nice. Then we've got another triple header. 
then one off, one on, one off, double header. Two weekends off before obviously <laughs> double header Belgium and Hungary. Then we've got another double header obviously after the summer break Netherlands Italy. Uh, then Azerbaijan is sensible. Singapore is sensible. <laughs> USA Mexico is a double header. Brazil is sensible, and then a triple header. To it. I guess the thing is obviously with Vegas is obviously a Saturday race, so you have yeah, got that so one extra, an extra day. day. Uh, do we know when the sprints are next year? Or oh, they don't Not really yet. get confirmed until get way too late, do they? I mean, yeah, they if, you were gonna, if you were going to guess six races that are going to host a sprint <coughs> next year, where it's all a bit say? random, isn't it? It kind of depends on which sprints are good this year. So I think Brazil, they're going to just give one because it's the only good sprint race so far. They and Austria, really they normally do. Yeah, Austria too. Uh, maybe Vegas, if they could fit it in, do you think? No, because it would have to be qualified it would have on to be, Thursday. Oh, yeah, true. That wouldn't work very well. Uh, Silverstone might get one. You never know. <sighs> they, yeah, I think they know the fans pay out the nose to go Silverstone anyway, so why would they give them any value for their <laughs> ticket? <laughs> true, true. I'd like to see a Bahrain sprint at some point. We haven't had one of them yet. Cause That's, it's usually... Bahrain as a season opener, I feel, deserves a sprint race. Not when well, it's, it's not. not. But when it well, is, but when it is a season opener, that would be a bit dumb having the first race of the season be a sprint. I don't like that. But James, when it's round four, sprint races are dumb anyway. That's the yeah, whole point. When it's round four, I'm like all for it. Get it a sprint race. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a stab in the dark, really, isn't it? They'll never give one to Monaco. They'll never no. give one to Barcelona. You'd hope not. And yeah, I doubt they'd give one to Zandvoort, really, because again, you, it's not great for overtaking. Belgium Last year saw the most overtakes nice. in the entire season. Yeah, because it was flipping wet, wasn't it? And everyone had no dry idea what wet, to do. Dry wet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you and, want uh, in a sprint Joe race. Joe Bonneau ran in the podium for about 10 laps. What a, what a baller. What happened to Joe in that race again? He aquaplaned because it was too wet. How many other people binned it at that corner? Um, like, actually ran out one of the race One other person it. went off about a second before he did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hit the wall, but we ignored <laughs> Yes. So I'm looking through. Is there any other good candidates for a sprint race? How long is Mexico City going to be on the calendar for, by the way? Well, I'm as soon just thinking, as Checo's dropped. Yeah. If they need to get rid of some races, obviously Barcelona's almost gone. So that's good. But that's being replaced City. anyway. Yeah, but Madrid will be a good race, so it's fine. Will it? Are you sure? <laughs> it's another sp- it. street track. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think Mexico's on the chopping block. Uh, I think Miami won't get another one after its 10-year contract. <laughs> but we've got a while left. Yeah. I mean, it's that thing, isn't it, of course, of... Next year, I believe, is the first time in quite a long time that it's identical in terms of the tracks that are on the calendar. Obviously, I know it's mm. on the same order and everything. Which, I, I, you know, it probably has happened at some point in the past, but I just can't remember when off the top of my head. Yeah, well done. Um... Where, what, obviously, like we said, Mexico is probably quite a prime candidate for that once Checo's gone. Where else could get dropped anytime soon? Miami, yeah, maybe, but they've got a long-term contract. Yeah. I worry no it would be something like drop. Belgium next. But... Well, Belgium was on the chopping block and now yeah. apparently is safe again. <clears throat> I think Imola, I don't know how it's still around, really. It was only ever joined the calendar as an accident. I appreciate Imola's history in the sport, but yeah, it kind of feels like it's become it's yet to really deliver a good race, has it? With the exception of 2020. 2021, you mean? 2020 was boring. No, 2020 was a good race. 2020 was the one where it was just a boring Mercedes 1-2 until Bottas messed up. Yeah, but there was a lot of battling going on behind there, wasn't it? Nah, rubbish. 2021 was boring. Lewis couldn't 2021 even know was that. class. That was, that was wet to drive. That good? I know it was wet to drive, but it wasn't that good, was it, for a wet to drive race? Yeah, yeah, it was good. <coughs> Maybe it's because Max won, and it suddenly made me believe that we could win the championship. But... Well, that's what I'm thinking, whether it was just actually the hype around it. That was for like... Lewis messing up and, and getting lucky that it got red flagged. No, that was because Max forced him off the road because he can't <laughs> race wheel to wheel. No, what are you on about? He just messed up when he was trying to lap Russell. No, but Max barged him off at turn one, which gave him the oh, damage. Oh, that's totally unrelated. <laughs> he got, went no. off and he got damage at turn one, did he? Yeah, you well, had no pace anyway because the car was wrecked. Because Max Please. was having to drive wheel to wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, anyway, go back to the original point. Though, 
anywhere else that could be dropped off the calendar? Uh, yeah, I guess Mexico and Imola are probably the two prime candidates, aren't they? Yeah, I, I think mean, but so. then you end up in a scenario where Monaco is the first race of the European leg, which seems odd. I we just put Spain back before Monaco then. Go to Madrid. I, I mean, I must admit that it makes sense. We always <laughs> use Barcelona to see who's quick in the final sector. Even though it's now that final now. sector's gone, yeah. yeah. Oh man, it's so weird, isn't it? It's so weird. Maybe yeah, Mexico, Imola, Miami could get dropped for some. Well, I mean, it'd be more tracks in the Middle East, but there we are. <laughs> Unless we end up with like thirty race seasons soon. It's. I mean, we're gonna have to do a lot of podcasts then. Yeah. Um, that seems. That seems intense. Um, shall we do the quiz, Jamie? We have really just rambled on today. Yes, I don't know what we've talked about for the last twenty minutes, but there we go. Hopefully, it's we've still done listening. well. We've we've done very very well. <laughs> um, of course, we're returning to Shanghai for the first time in five years. We are. Your quiz this week, Jamie, is not to name me every winner okay. of the Chinese I, Grand Prix. I didn't Prix. see that coming. <laughs> no, it's not to win that. It's not. Um, okay. You <laughs> gonna be like who finished fourth each year? No, 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 no. You have got to try and give me the. So what I'm gonna say <laughs> is you can get them in any order. Okay. But you you can't get a wrong one, otherwise okay. it's over. So you've got to name me <coughs> every point scorer oh, wow. in the first Chinese oh. Grand Prix way back in 2004. And I can't get it wrong. So you've got no time limit, but as soon as you get one wrong, you're You right. know, this morning I was going to watch uh, the highlights of that on YouTube, but I didn't because I didn't have time. <laughs> that would have been quality. But I have no idea. I think this is a trick question because I think Schumacher crashed down the formation lap. He didn't crash on the formation lap. He crashed out on the installation lap. So yes, he on the, the way race. to the grid. Oh, he did start the race. He did start the race. Oh, four... Okay, I was. <laughs> this could, could be over straight away. I'm gonna say Michael Schumacher. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be the shortest quiz we've ever done. Are you baiting uh, me into that? I wouldn't have no. said it if you, if you. Did he actually start the race? You weren't lying. He started from the pit lane. Yeah, he finished the lap down. He oh, had an fantastic. absolute stinkery span. He binned it with traction control. Oh four. Well, I can I carry on. Anyway, I'll let you carry on. There's only eight point fun. scorers. I reckon yeah. David Coulthard. I never say nope. that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he, fin- he finished ninth. <laughs> uh, uh, oh man, was... this is so funny. You're basically just going to give me the 2004 grid now. <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen was he? A... Uh, yep, he finished third. There you go. Juan Pablo Montoya. He finished fifth. Yano Trulli. Uh, no. I don't uh, think Fizikella. so. Fisichella finished seventh. <laughs> there you go. What a guy. Uh, Yano Trulli? Sorry. Wasn't even on the grid. Yes, he was. Yano Trulli was not at the 2004 Chinese Grand Prix. I swear he raced it though for. Uh, it was Jacques Villeneuve in the Renault because he'd been dropped, hadn't he? Before the uh, end of the year. Oh, China. He missed the only race he missed was China. Why? Because <laughs> Jacques Villeneuve replaced him. Because <laughs> he got dropped. But he came back for Japan the race after. Oh no, he went to Toyota. Never mind. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so you so go. far you've given me three correct answers and three I think, wrong ones, including a driver that struggle. wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think I'll throw him a towel. <laughs> You're not even gonna give me any more guesses. Well I've already That's messed up, haven't I? Uh, you have messed up catastrophic. Timo Glock. He was he... driving for Jordan, wasn't he? Uh he didn't he finished a lap down in P fifteen. <laughs> you are awful at this. <laughs> yeah. I can't even O four is a poor season for me. Uh, um, Button? Button came second. Uh who would have won the race? Barrichello? Yes. Ah, there you go. I believe before oh nine, yeah, it was Barrichello's last win. Oh yeah, it would have been because he went to uh B A R. Wait, did he? No, well, he, didn't, a, no he, he, he did Ferrari. that in 06, but obviously Ferrari yeah, didn't win anything terrible. in 05, apart from Indy. There you go. So that it was, was Barrichello a victory. Quiz. It was horrendous. Barrichello, uh, Button, Kimi Raikkonen P3, ahead of Alonso, Montoya, Sato, Fisichella, and Felipe Massa. Very good. I was never going to get half of them. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them. I'm looking, looking at this. <laughs> I was looking at it the was, grid, and Panis was P8, and I never got him. It was BAR and Sauber were the only teams to score points. The only teams to get both cars in the yeah. box, sorry, I should say. Wow. 
I actually picked you quite an unpredictable race. You did. And you predict, you picked me a race in 2004 that Michael Schumacher wasn't the right answer for. So I feel like I've, I, I got set up a bit there. Oh, well, I but. feel like you should have been able to see that coming a mile off, to be fair. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, one of the only races that Schumacher didn't win that year. Yeah, um, exactly. I think it was the only time he didn't score points, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. Um, because it was the final race of the year, and he had an absolute disaster. It wasn't the final. Wasn't it? There were two sure. races after. It, oh, Brazil and China, yeah. And Shirley um, came back. That's why I thought he raced. Yeah, so Schumacher finished, obviously didn't finish Monaco early on, came second in Belgium and Italy, then 12th in Shanghai, won Japan, and 7th in Brazil. Best season of all time by any driver. Uh, 2002. Yeah, yeah, true. But 04 Probably was more interesting. Every single race. Oh, yeah. 04 was... 04 was a bit like 2023, wasn't it? Actually, there was quite a few times where people were close-ish to Red Bull. Uh, so obviously to Red Bull Ferrari. or Ferrari back then. Um, but yeah, just no one can make it happen. There you um, go. We have you go. waffled like crazy. This has been a very waffly show. I'm sorry to everyone listening. Um, let's finish off then, Jamie, with predictions. Predictions, yes. predictions, and predictions. First sprint prediction of the year. Yes. So we've got an extra two points on offer. Yeah, boy. We only do... Sprint win. Sprint race qualifying in top three, don't we? We yes. don't do sprint quali. No, sprint quali is pointless. Also, Wonderful. where sprint quali is now before real quali, that's going to be annoying. Wasn't it always before real quali? No, because sprint quali was on Saturday morning, real quali was on Friday night. No. Real yes. qualifying has never been before the sprint race. Yes. It says how bad this system is yes, when we don't has. even know. When? Sprint qual- no, real qualifying last season was on a Friday. Was it? Yes. <laughs> That's the only change. They've swapped them. I thought they swapped <laughs> real qualifying with a sprint race. Well, they did. As in, like, real quality has gone from Friday to Saturday afternoon. So now we get all of the sprint stuff done before real quality. But you just said real qualifying was on Friday night. I thought it was sprint qualifying on Friday night, no. real qualifying Saturday morning, and then the sprint race Saturday afternoon. No. No, no, no. It was it's Sprint Saturday, so wasn't it? Stupid. It was Sprint Saturday. You're just was you're it? you're not thinking straight. Oh, I don't know, man. It's so it tells you we oh, man. We've watched this sport for most of our lives, and I can't <laughs> see what the format was for a stupid weekend <laughs> last year. How <laughs> dumb are sprint races, man? Because now not only is the first stint of the race going to be spoiled, but also qualifying is going to be spoiled. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. It's just awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teary me, yeah. man. Let's stop <laughs> ranting. You've lost oh, your head. Man. I have. What are the scores going into this? The scores are... Uh, I'm on 18, you're on 13. So you get okay. to go first. Wonderful. Uh, sprint win. Max Verstappen. <laughs> Real qualifying. Oh, I should take the easy two points, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to say Charles Leclerc. Podium. Actually, no, I'm not going to say Charles Leclerc. I'm going to say Carlos Sainz. He has That's been better right. than Leclerc recently. I'm getting spicy. Um, Science has only got, what, two poles ever? Two or, two or three, three, yeah. Um, podium is going to be Max Verstappen. <sighs> Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz. Okay. No Perez in any way to no be seen. No Perez. No Perez. I might go for a little Perez sprint win just to be different. Okay. Fantastic. So Checo is going to get his first win of the season in a sprint. Nice. Uh, actually, I just remember what I said was wrong. Qatar was a sprint, wasn't it? So is Oscar Piastri not the last sprint winner? I said Brazil no, was because Brazil race. was after last year. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> I would go Checo Perez to win the sprint. I would go Max Verstappen to be on pole position. I will go Max Verstappen to win the race, followed by Checo Perez and Lando Norris. Interesting. There you go. Okay, so we've got very, very different. <coughs> it's very right? different. We need yes. to make sure we write in our predictions as well so I can do the graphic yes. um, after this. Um, have we got anything else to add, though, Jamie, apart from the worst ever score we've seen in the quiz? <laughs> 
Uh, podcast will be late next week. Apologies. It will. Yes. It, well, it's been late this week as well. Um, we're, we're both busy with life at the moment, so we apologise for yeah. that. Yeah. I'll uh, uh, so I'll be running my own race on Sunday morning, so I'm not you sure will. Watching, yeah. Watching very China. very good luck to you. <laughs> is it is it a full marathon or a half marathon? Half, half marathon in Vienna. Oh, so I if you're in you Vienna, luck, then. come and say hello. Hello, Make sure hello. if you're watching the Vienna half marathon, you bring out some posters saying "Knowing Wheel" on top. Oh, and exactly. Jamie will personally give you a handshake and halfway around. Yeah, I I won't stop. But if it's very quick, if you can run with me, I'll give you a handshake. Fair enough. There you go. The deal has been done, ladies and gents. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening, as always. Uh, if you've made it to the end of one of our most rambliest episodes ever, then I salute you. Uh, and we will be back next week to look back over the action from the Chinese Grand Prix.